Mars, and here's a mad science update for today. In North Mytho Norse mythology, humans in our world were created by a pantheon of gods who lived in the realm of Asgard. It turns out these stories have grand truth to them. Really? Thanks to a team of scientists led by Thesius Etima. Asgard is now the name of a large clan of microbes. The members, which are named after Norse gods like Odin, Thor, Loki, Heimdall, and all, are found all over the world. Many of them are rare, and none has, no one has actually seen them under a microscope. But thanks to our DNA, we know they exist. That's enough to trigger a mad science update right there. I don't know how you get any kookier than that. <laughs> uh, you have their DNA, but you haven't seen them? Excuse me, that's absurd. We know that they're singularly important to us because they may well have been the group from which we evolved. Oh, brother. If Adam is right, then around two billion years ago, as guardian microbe were an incredibly close or an incredibly close relative took part in a unique event that gave rise to the eukaryotes. That's the group that includes humans, our fellow animals, plants, fungi, and every living thing made from large complex cells. All living things that we're most familiar with and all ones we can actually see. Our origins lie either in Asgard or next door to it. Uh, really? So, now we were created by Norse gods. You see how kooky these people are getting? To understand the story, we need to go back to the very, very beginning. Earth was created around 4.5 billion years ago, and judging from some astonishingly ancient fossils, life emerged relatively soon after that. What a vivid imagination. For the longest time, living things belonged to either to two great domains, bacteria and the archaea, both microscopic and both comprising single cells. This was the status quo for, for, for at least 1.7 billion years, till the two domain, domains were joined by a third, the eukaryotes. 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 Whatever. Eukaryotes are generally much bigger than either bacteria or archaea. They also have larger genomes. They have internal compartments that act like our organs, each with its own special job. Well, so do most cells, so what's your point? They have an internal skeleton that acts as a transport network for molecules. There's this huge gulf of complexity that separates them from the other two domains. It's a gulf that has only ever been crossed once in life's history. Bacteria and archaea are capable of amazing feats of evolution, which is BS, but... In over 3.7 billion years of existence, none have ever evolved into anything approaching a eukaryote cell, except that one time. Why? One possible answer that I've, which I've written about before, says that eukaryotes were created through an incredibly unlikely merger between members of the two domains. Let me guess. So, a bacterium had sex with an egg, these others, and then um, that's what they're saying. 
somehow bacterium found its way inside an archaean and rather than being digested or destroyed, it became a living part of its host. In doing so, it provided an archaean with an extra source of energy, which allowed it to get bigger, accumulate more genes, and evolved on new paths that were previously inaccessible to it. That fusion gave rise to the eukaryotes, and bacterium eventually turned into the my mitochondria, little bean-shaped structures that still follow the eukaryotes to this day. Well, these people have vivid imaginations. Once the eukaryotes evolved, they repeatedly engulfed microbes and fused with them a process called endosymbiosis. That's much easier to do when the host's cell is already big and can engulf small neighbors. The host is an archaean feat becomes much harder and far more improbable. That's maybe because maybe why the merger between archaean and bacterium, the one that gave rise to the mitochondria, may have spun the eukaryotes, but happened only once. What on earth are these people talking about? What were these two ancient partners like? We know that the bacterium belonged to a group called Alpha Probacteria, which includes Wolbachia, a microbe that I've repeatedly written about here, but until recently no one knew anything about the Archean host. And this goes on and on. Uh, excuse me, but does this not sound like a total fantasy to you? It sounds like a total fantasy to me. Uh, kind of like saying we took a uh, Cadillac and a Volkswagen, merged them together, and we came up with a Lexus. Unreal. These people are reaching. I'm going to give you my take on things, which you've probably heard before. I think it's obvious that what's happening in this country and uh, with what you're calling evolution isn't evolution at all. Uh... I think it's obvious we have a greater, one or more greater intelligences that are continuously upgrading things. Now, there goes artifacts saying something without any proof. Well, I do have proof. Not direct proof, but, uh, we're doing the same thing. We have been selectively breeding things for centuries to get the results we want. We've been we're genetically engineering things. It's not going to be all that long before we uh, start releasing designer creatures out into the wild. Actually, we're doing that with all these designer crops. So don't sit there and tell me that there can't be... Uh, you know, these greater intelligences that are staging these different things on our planet. I'm an agnostic, so I don't know exactly who or what they are, but we're doing the same thing. I, you know, I can't prove that these entities exist and they're doing this, but I can prove that we're doing it. We're changing what's on this planet. We're putting things out in the wild that probably shouldn't be. We're changing the genome. We're selectively breeding creatures to uh, suit ourselves. So isn't it conceivable that there are greater intelligences that are doing the same thing overall with this planet? Putting new beasties on here taking some off, changing them. 
Let me put to you this way. They see you, you know, this beastie isn't adapted to a certain environment, so they're going to put some genes on it, change it, boom, you have a new species. Duh! This is all purpose-driven. I just don't know who has purpose. I'm Artifacts of Mars. I went a little long. Thanks for watching.